Good morning. Welcome to worship. Beautiful snowy morning out there. That picture we had up there earlier was a uh, was very appropriate. Jake, put that picture back up there, would you? The one about the with the the pine trees. There, very appropriate. If you look really closely, that's actually a, a video, and there's actually snow falling in that picture. So, um, welcome to worship. Uh, glad to have you all with us here this morning. Glad to have those of you joining us on the stream uh, today as well. Um, just a few announcements here as we get started. First of all, uh, just check out the table on your way out in the gathering room uh, if you're interested in buying a Super Bowl sub. And uh, the subs will be available on Super Bowl Sunday, which is uh, February 12th, I believe. Okay, So you have plenty of time to order. Um, our annual meeting is two weeks from today. February 5th, and it'll be at noon, approximately noon, immediately following our uh, second service uh, that starts at 1045. So um, if you could come back at noon, uh, if you come to this service, we would appreciate that. Um, and we're still looking uh, for a couple more people to serve on church council. So if you're interested in serving on church council, um, see me uh, or call me and uh, we'll have a chat. All right, um, card making uh, is this coming Wednesday at 9.30. So those, those of you who make cards, um, it's this week, okay, 9.30 on Wednesday. And finally, we are communing today, uh, and we will do it by intinction uh, here at the front of the uh, uh, sanctuary. Uh, if you're a guest or a visitor among us, you are more than welcome to come and join us uh, at the Lord's table if you feel so moved by the Holy Spirit. Uh, and just remember, hang on to your wafer and dip it in the cup uh, before you consume it. There are two cups. Uh, the gold uh, clear liquid is grape juice. The purple liquid is wine. Okay, so gold clear liquid is grape juice. The purple is wine. Okay? All right, well, follow your usher's instructions. Ushers, we're going to commune this side first today, and then we'll commune this side afterwards. All right, thanks. All right, any other announcements that need to be made? All right, let's uh, stand and we'll get started with uh, the brief order of confession and forgiveness. We begin our worship this morning in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Scripture teaches us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's take a few moments to reflect upon our own personal sinfulness, our own corporate sinfulness as the body of Christ, um, and our need to confess that sin, and then uh, prepare ourselves to hear God's words of forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, you sent your Son to proclaim your kingdom and to teach with authority. Anoint us with the power of your Holy Spirit, that we too may bring good news to the afflicted, bind up the brokenhearted, and proclaim liberty to the captive. All these things we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you join me in singing our opening hymn? It is Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. The words will be on the screen. Uh, It's also in the green book on page 90. Songs of thankfulness and praise, Jesus Lord to ask you to turn to your neighbors and greet them this morning and uh, if you want to share the peace you're welcome to or just give them a little tap on the chest so good morning how are you good morning I'm just gonna tap you <laughs> good morning how are you morning Randy good morning Good morning. How are you? I'm just going to tap today. Good morning. Good morning. All right. You may be seated. At this time, we'll continue our worship with the reading of the lessons. Good morning. 
Isn't it beautiful how God cleans the earth with that whiteness that we have out there? I know it's a struggle for some of us, but it surely makes things look clean and bright. Good morning. The first lesson this morning is from Psalm 92, beginning with the 12th verse. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, The Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. Here ends the first lesson. Our second lesson is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 3, beginning with the 14th verse. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Here ends our second lesson. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. beginning with the 15th verse. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field, and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and I am on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, and the blind and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you order has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told the servant, Go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, uh, we continue our Growing in Christ uh, initiative preaching series uh, this morning. We are continuing uh, with Putting Christ First. Uh, this is the second week I have uh, preached on this topic. Um, and so we continue with the 
the uh, memory verse for the Putting in Christ first chapter, chapter 6 in your Growing in Christ book, and that is Matthew 6, 33. So uh, speak it with me. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Hey, let's say that again. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Okay, so uh, I'm going to ask you to turn over uh, your uh, sermon notes, and I'm going to ask you to shut your Bibles, and we're going to try this memory verse uh, together uh, purely from memory, not from any kind of uh, helps here today. Are we ready? The first words are, but seek first, okay? All right, here we go. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Okay, very good. Well, continue to work with that verse, um, and starting next week, uh, we'll have a, a, another verse from, from chapter 7. Um, uh, these verses are important. They're, they're fundamental, foundational verses for us as Christians, and every Christian uh, ought to have them uh, on the tip of their tongue, especially when you're witnessing uh, to someone about your faith. All right. Well, uh, last week um, we discussed uh, how worry can keep us uh, from uh, putting Christ first in our lives. But that's not the only barrier. Okay, Worry is not the only barrier uh, that we should be concerned about uh, when it comes to putting Christ first. Motivation, or more precisely, the lack of motivation, is another barrier that can prevent us from making Christ our first priority. Our own will uh, is a powerful force. I'm, I'm sure you've noticed that uh, in your own uh, daily lives. Um, when, for instance, you're trying to uh, control your eating and avoid you know, eating junk food and so forth, that, uh, that your own will oftentimes is so powerful that it overpowers your reason, doesn't it? Um, just one example of how powerful our wills are. Our first human inclination is to put ourselves first, not God. And so it takes intentional effort to put God's will above your own. And so I, I put up here today for you to begin to think about um, as our focus question, in what ways do my desires impede God's will in my life? This is an important question. I, I think it's a, it's a really good starting point um, when you think about your Christian walk with God. Um, you, when, when you think about this question and, and begin uh, to let this question guide your own daily life, um, you begin to take responsibility for your faith life. You begin to uh, realize that, you know, relationship with God, like any other relationship, is a two-way street, or as the old phrase goes, it takes two to tango. It's not just a one-sided or a God-sided relationship. You are expected by God to be engaged in this relationship, um, to, to uh, take part fully in this relationship uh, with Him. So what are the things that prevent you from doing that? But, you know, before we uh, go on and, and talk about this verse, I first want to ask an even more basic question, which is, why would I want to put Christ first in my life? Okay. If you're out witnessing to someone uh, who doesn't know God, who's never been to church, who doesn't know who Jesus is, you might find that that's the first question that they ask. Why would I want to put Christ? Christ first. Well, I think the three scripture lessons that we looked at today really uh, get right to the heart uh, of the answer to that question. 
um, they give us several good reasons why we might want to put Christ first. In our first lesson that we read here this morning, uh, in Psalm 92, we read in verse 12 that the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. I love that word there, flourish. That's why I, I capitalized that word. I, I, you, should, you should circle that word on your sermon notes. Um, God wants you to flourish as a human being. He wants you to flourish as a child of God. He wants you to, to receive his grace, to receive his forgiveness, become a child of God, and live in that grace. That's what it means to flourish. The, the psalmist goes on to say uh, in Psalm 92 that God wants us to stay fresh and green. He doesn't want us to... Uh, I like the word atrophy. He doesn't want us to atrophy, all right? He doesn't want us to become brittle in our hearts and minds. He wants us to continually be learning, continually be growing, uh, to be continually be uh, enjoying uh, His presence and learning from Him. He wants you to, to stay alive. He wants you to grow spiritually your whole life. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. You can be 16, you can be 69, you can be 96. But God still wants you to be green and supple uh, and, and, and open to growth in your spiritual life. And then he goes on in that psalm and says he wants you to also bear fruit. Okay, He wants you to be productive spiritually in your life. And what does that mean? Well, we've been talking about this all year, haven't we? What does it mean? It means to, to walk in the grace of God and to be willing at any time in any place to share your faith with another person, to witness for Jesus Christ. That's what it means to bear fruit. To bear fruit means to not just be a disciple, but to be a disciple maker as well. Um, so I, I hear this, you know, from time to time from some of you more seasoned citizens in the congregation. Well, pastor, I can't do that anymore. And, and to those of you who say that, I say, I, I kind of understand your sentiment. I mean, it is, uh, as I'm getting older, you know, physically, I realize that, you know, I'm slowing down a little bit. I'm not as sharp a knife in the drawer as I used to be. Um, but you know what? God doesn't care. God still wants you to be young and vibrant in your spirit. And I suggest to you, if you continue to study your Bibles, you continue to pray, to meditate, to be involved in the ministry of Jesus Christ through the body of Christ, um, he, you may grow old physically, but you will stay young spiritually. That's what it means to flourish. God wants you to flourish in your faith. All right. Um, let's move on to the Ephesians reading. Uh, in our Ephesians reading, we read this, um, that uh, Paul writes to the Ephesian church, and, and uh, indirectly then he's writing to us as well as, as disciples of Jesus. I pray that you may have the power to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And I would add the words, for you, that you would grasp how wide, long, high, deep is the love of Christ for you. How immense, how amazing, how awesome God's love in Christ is for you. And God wants you to, to know this love he wants you to, to and I, I capitalize it, um, he, he doesn't want you to just know it here in your mind. He doesn't want you to know about the love that God has. He wants you to experience it. He wants you to live in it. He wants that love to direct your life. He wants that love to bring 
you peace and joy and knowledge and understanding beyond all measure. In other words, this isn't about, this is, Christianity isn't an intellectual exercise primarily. It's a relation, a relational exercise. Okay? As a, as a parent loves a child, that's how God loves us. And God wants you to know that. He wants you to never forget that. He wants you to believe it. Oftentimes when I'm ministering to people, they will say to me, I, you know, I just, I just don't think I'm worthy of God's love. Or they'll say, I just don't feel it. Um, or they'll say, you know, um, I'm not sure I believe it. Well, today, this lesson from Ephesians is Paul trying to convince the flock that all of those things are not true. Okay? You, you are worthy of God's love. Christ died for you. That makes you worthy. Um, and and you, you know what? You don't always feel that love of God. I mean, you know, life gets in the way. But, but that doesn't mean that God stops loving you just because I can't feel it. Right? Um, sometimes you feel it. Sometimes you don't. Right? Sometimes you feel it more strongly than other times. Know this beyond a shadow of a doubt. God loves you more than you can ever imagine. In fact, in, in that Ephesians lesson, in, in the next verse, 320, that's exactly what Paul says. He says, I want you to grasp this love that is more than you can ever imagine. All right, so... God wants you to flourish, and he wants you to know the depths of his love for you. And finally, as we saw in this uh, uh, story from our gospel lesson, um, God has prepared a great banquet for those uh, who trust him. Um, he wants you to feast on his bounty. Uh, there, let's read the first couple verses from our, our gospel lesson this morning. A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servants to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. When we hear this story, I think we, we tend to focus on those who refused to come, right? We think, oh, how terrible that is that, that people heard uh, this, uh, this man. He had just out of the goodness of his heart had created this huge feast and he invited all of his neighbors and no one wanted to come. How terrible that is. We worry about those people, don't we? Those people that, that, that didn't come to the feast. And I think we worry that we're going to miss the feast too. But today, I want us to focus not on ourselves, okay? I want us to focus on the giver of the feast. Notice that the giver of the feast, he goes to great lengths to make it a really good feast, all right? Just, you know, think of every food that you ever wanted uh, that was, you know, when you think, that, what are the foods that make your mouth water? I bet they were at this feast. The man wanted all of his friends and all of his neighbors to come and enjoy that feast. And why? Because the giver of the feast takes great delight in seeing everyone enjoying the feast. The giver of the feast likes to step back and, and survey the banquet hall and watch everybody laughing and smiling and enjoying this feast and the fellowship that comes with it. The analogy is clear, isn't it? Our God is inviting us into his presence so that he can throw a grand banquet for us. And nothing pleases God more than to see his human creation enjoying the life that he has laid out for them. Have you ever stopped to think of it in these terms? Life is intended to be a grand banquet thrown for us by God. 
as the father in the story of the, the prodigal son tells the, his, his, his older son, everything I have is yours. God has said the same thing to us. Everything I have here. This universe was created for you so that you could live in my grace. You could live in the body of Christ and you could know life to the fullest. But of course, we cannot ignore the fact that most people ignore the invitation to the feast. And when they do, they don't flourish. And they don't experience and know the depth of God's love. They don't experience life to the fullest as God intended. And so we also um, need to be intentional about not ignoring God's invitation to his feast. So let's take another look at that focus question. In what ways uh, do my desires impede God's will in my life? Well, in the story, Jesus gives us three examples of how human beings let their own desires get in the way of God's will for their lives. And I have to tell you, these three examples are universal. They, they are just as uh, appropriate uh, uh, as they, uh, today as they were uh, back in Jesus' day. And, and they're not uh, inclusive. Um, they're just examples. There are many other uh, things that we can do uh, that will get in the way of, of God's will for our lives. But, but let's look at these real quickly here. Um, the first one um, we read there in uh, Luke 14, 18, the first person said, I can't come. I have just bought a field, and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. And so what does that suggest of us? That's suggestive that wealth, the accumulation of wealth, the pursuit of wealth, can indeed get in our way uh, of, of serving God. All right? That one, I think it's pretty easy for many of us to, to understand. Um, many of us worry deeply about our finances. We worry, are we going to have enough for the future? Are we going to have enough for the next week? Are we going to have enough to pay, pay the bills at the end of the month? And Jesus is saying, be careful. Be careful. All right, what's the next one? He, he, example he brings up? Uh, Luke 14, 19, he says, Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. So here's a big one. Um, that many of us, I think, oftentimes don't think about. How do we let our, our working life, how do we let our careers, how do we let our jobs get in the way of serving God? And finally, he tells us this. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. <laughs> um, we all understand that. You know, that first year of marriage, it's crazy, isn't it? Um, but sometimes, sometimes we let family get in the way of our faith, don't we? Sometimes, you know, our families um, work against our desires to come and be a part of the body of Christ. Oh, why are you doing that? Why are you going? Oh, please, stay, stay home with me. Uh, look, let's, uh, we were out late last night. Let's just sleep in on Sunday morning. You, we hear that. We can hear that from family members, can't we? Um, family, friends. Jesus is saying, can become stumbling blocks to our faith, okay? Um, and there are other stumbling blocks that you can think of, right? Entertainment can be a stumbling block. Pleasure, the pursuit of pleasure, thrill-seeking, hobbies, you know, et cetera, et cetera. The list is endless. What Jesus is really saying here um, is this. Yes, many of these activities that we talked about are good and wholesome in their own right. Absolutely. But if you elevate them to a higher priority than putting Christ first, they become stumbling blocks 
And in the church, we have a word for that, don't we? We call them idols. So Jesus is just warning us. You know, God has laid this feast out for us, and he's inviting us to take part of it. Don't let the other things in life prevent you from responding to that invitation. So there at the bottom of my sermon notes here this morning, there's a faith challenge. And this is what I say in that faith challenge. I say, do not let the good become the enemy of the perfect. Do not let the good become the enemy of the perfect. There are good things in life, okay? They're gifts from God. And God wants you to enjoy them. But he doesn't want you to let them become idols. He doesn't want you uh, to make them more important in your life than God. Don't make the gift more important than the giver of the gift. The giver of the gift gives you the gifts so that you will know that the giver wants to live in an intimate, life-giving life relationship with you pursue the one perfect thing with your life our memory verse said and guess what all these other things will be added unto you because God wants to give his children good gifts so I want you to think and pray this week on how not to let the good become the enemy of the one perfect thing in your life, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you join me in confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed? Actually, that's the Nicene Creed, isn't it, Jake? Okay, that's fine. We'll use it today. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let me ask, uh, uh, well, well, we'll talk about joys first. And uh, I do know for a fact that today is uh, Sandy Fisher's birthday. So happy birthday, Sandy. Other joys you'd like to share with the congregation this morning? Yes, Mary. All right. All right. So Jake and Lauren Beck, your son and, and daughter-in-law, are now the proud parents of Decker? Riker. Riker. Okay. Congratulations. That's awesome. What day was he born? Monday. Monday. That's great. Awesome. Congratulations. Other joys this morning? Yes. <laughs> they don't have any either. Well, Jennifer uh, from Belgium, welcome. Glad to have you here. And Roar is your last name, correct? Okay, Jennifer Roar.
Anyone else? Yes, Harlan. Okay, our, our organist, Rob, only he's not here today, Harlan. Uh, Reed is filling in for him this morning. So if, uh, if you see him, tell him we said ha uh, happy birthday. Otherwise, remember that thought and bring it up again next week when he's here, okay? All right, other joys. All right, um, some additions to our prayer list. Uh, Sam Packard is still uh, battling um, the minimal change disease that he has. So um, that's an up and down thing. And so his mother asked that we pray for him uh, this morning. Uh, also, Ron Finning, is, uh, he had some uh, additional heart procedures this week. So he is um, recovering. Uh, also, Don Johnson is recovering from uh, heart bypass surgery. And uh, Sharon Ruder asked that we pray for her. Uh, she is going in this week to have one of the, those uh, lip, lipo, lipotripsy, I think they call it. Is that how you say it? Lip, something close to that. Where they blast a kidney stone and break it up. So she's praying that that will be successful this week. So we'll pray for Sharon. Others we need to pray for. Yes. Friends and family of Chuck Wilson. Okay. Will do. Others? Yes. Okay. We want to pray for Mike Machinsky. Uh, he is starting uh, radiation uh, treatments this week for cancer of the prostate. Yes. What was her last name? Blackford, okay. And she was an aunt, is that correct? Yeah, okay. Okay. All right, anyone else? All right, let's bow our heads and pray. Father in heaven, gracious Lord, as we gather here this morning, uh, we are reminded of what an awesome, amazing God that you are and how much you love us and how much you do for us how much you've done for us, how much you do for us, and what you will do for us in the future. Um, and Lord, uh, it's a humbling thing to, th to think about. And so we simply come before you and thank you from the bottom of our hearts, and we give you praise and honor uh, for all that you do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, Father in heaven, um, we simply pray that you help us to keep Christ first in our lives, to be intentional about that. Inspire us, Lord, uh, to do the right things, uh, to put him first. Um, help us to enjoy your good gifts, but not to make them into idols. Uh, for Lord, uh, uh, God, he, he is um, uh, our master. Uh, he is our savior. He is our messiah. And so we uh, commend, commit ourselves uh, to serving him and him alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, Father, um, you send us out into the world um, to be ministers of the gospel. Uh, give us strength. Um, give us courage. Uh, give us inspiration um, to speak the gospel, to live the gospel, um, to be examples of, uh, to the world of what it means to be a child of God, saved by the grace of Jesus. Lord, put love and compassion in our hearts um, and uh, move us um, to share that love and to be compassionate uh, on our neighbors um, and to boldly proclaim the good news of Jesus um, that others may hear um, of, of your son uh, and come to know him and serve him with their lives. Um, we, uh, we pray this day, uh, Lord God, for all people everywhere, that they may hear the gospel and be moved to faith. And we pray uh, for those who have special needs, wherever they may be, in our world, uh, in our communities. Uh, we pray especially for those on our prayer list here at St. Michael. We pray for those that we lifted up here just a few moments ago, Sam Packard and Ron Dan and Sharon, Mike, 
Uh, we continue to pray for, for healing in their lives. Watch over them, protect them, surround them with your, your love, Lord God. We pray for the family and friends of LaDonna Blackford and for Chuck Wilson. Uh, as they leave this life and enter into life eternal, we pray, Father, that you welcome them home to your uh, heavenly kingdom and surround them with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you for the gift of this church. We thank you for uh, making us worthy to serve you in the body of Christ. What a privilege it is. Uh, and so, Lord, now, help us to be intentional about that life, this, this life in the body. Help us to be intentional uh, in ministering to one another and loving one another as Christ loved us. Uh, and, Lord, uh, help us to always be looking outward, um, being willing, uh, being ready to serve you by ministering to others uh, in whatever situation uh, you put us in. Uh, Lord, give us courage. Um, help us to remember that you are always there with us. Uh, when we are called upon to minister, we are never alone, that you are there with us, uh, guiding us, directing us uh, in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your grace and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, let us now share with God our tithes and our offerings. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It 
It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then our Lord Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of your sin. As often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. We pray the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
Would you please stand? Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed through this one heavenly food, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and always. Amen. Our sending hymn today uh, is Take My Life That I May Be. The words will be on the screen. You can also find it in the green book on page 406. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.